Okay, amazing. We got. Can we start right now? Yeah, let's go. Thank you, Andrew. So good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Matar. I'm representing University Foundation College in Doha. Uh, we are partners for the NCUK, the Northern Consortium of UK Universities, and we offer the International Foundation Year program in Qatar. Um, today, um, we are here with our partner universities, especially to speak about engineering programs or uh, engineering related courses. Um, allow me to thank our uh, the representatives who are attending with us today. Um, let me remind you something. We offer the International Foundation the Diploma, which is a qualification designed by the NCUK. And the universities who are here today, they accept the NCUK Foundation qualifications to admit students into their programs if they meet the entry requirements. So um, I'm going to leave it to my colleague Andrew from the NCUK in Manchester. He's going to introduce the NCUK and our uh, the representatives who are here today. And um, there are going to be short presentations after which uh, universities are going to move to their own breakout rooms where you can ask your own questions and have individual chats. Thank you very much again. We will be here in case you have any questions. Leave these questions in the chat and I will see you later in the University Foundation College breakout room. Andrew? Thank you very much, Nancy, uh, and a warm welcome to today's um, virtual fair, if you like. Uh, hopefully today we'll give you a good insight really um, on First of all, what your potential options are for studying with NCUK and UFC in Doha, but arguably more importantly, the, the fantastic opportunities that each of the universities present today um, can offer you, not only within their engineering faculties, but of course, across the spectrum of programs that they have available to international students. Um, so just a, a couple of um, sort of uh, quick, quick slides from an NCUK perspective. NCUK is an organization who work with study centers all over the world, including, of course, University Foundation College in Doha, to offer sort of pathway programs to help get international students into our university partnerships and degree programs globally. Uh, we've been working now with UFC for, this is our fifth year, I believe, and year on year, we are growing very well, getting fantastic student outcomes, and many students have already made the, the trip and progressed on to a wide range of different degree programs globally. Um, wider afield than Qatar, uh, we've been working uh, with our university partners now for over 30 years. And in that time, close to 40,000 students now, inclusive of our last graduating cohort, have gone through the NCUK qualifications and onto the degree program of their choice. Uh, so very much a tried and tested formula. And again, the big advantage really, particularly in today's climate, is that you are able to get access to these wonderful universities by studying with University Foundation College on our international foundation year. So hopefully my the video should work, uh, which doesn't appear to be working, of course. Um, just bear with me one second. Sorry about this. Right. Okay, we should be better now. There we go. Get started on your pathway to your dream university today. Choose from our global network of study centers. Improve your academic and English language skills. Progress to a world-class university of your choice. Graduate with an internationally recognized degree. Ready to succeed in your career. Study abroad with confidence. Our qualifications will fully prepare you for university study and with our flexible study options, you have the freedom to choose the best path for you. Give yourself the best start. Our pathway qualifications are designed exclusively for international students. They will provide you with access to top-ranked universities worldwide. 
giving you the opportunity to choose from thousands of degree courses. What's more, we'll provide you with expert advice on your progression options and we'll support you throughout the entire university application process. And that's why over 35,000 students have benefited from the NCUK guarantee. NCUK, your best route to university. Okay, um, that's enough from NCUK and UFC now. Um, so now really we're gonna give the opportunity for a number of our university partners to quickly introduce the universities. They will each have you know, five or six minutes to quickly introduce uh, sort of who they are, what they do. Um, but each of these universities, more importantly, do have breakout rooms. So after the presentations, um, please feel free to take full advantage of meeting the universities. Um, and having the opportunity to ask any questions about studying with them. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our first presenter, who is uh, Adam from the University of Sheffield. So Adam, over to you, please. Hey everybody, good afternoon. Welcome to the session. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I just have five minutes to tell you all about the University of Sheffield. So make sure you're listening really attentively because this is going to be very fast. Um, so the University of Sheffield, Northern University, um, very, very central in the north near Leeds, Manchester, York, very, very easy to get to and is uh, very well ranked in the UK. So it's uh, 95th in the world and that's out of uh, thousands of universities worldwide and it's considered 17th in the UK so out of 180 or so UK universities so it's one of those universities that is uh, academically dedicated and uh, prestigious prestigious sorry we are in the top 10% for research output in the UK and we are a Russell Group University Russell Group universities are universities which dedicate a proportion of their budget to um, dedicating human so to uh, developing human knowledge and to pushing the avant-garde of uh, human understanding of the world. So we are one of those universities. We have a community of 29,000 students from 150 different countries. So we tend to say, wherever you're from, you'll find somebody in Sheffield that you have something in common with. Um, you're looking at the first university building that was built there, which was built in 1905. And this is when we started. We have 141 students when we started, and uh, we were just teaching a couple of subjects. But we now teach over uh, 300 undergraduate courses. I'm gonna focus very quickly on uh, the engineering departments today because you'll also end up to hear about engineering. We offer automatic control and systems engineering, which is everything pertaining to fabrication, factory, manufacturing, um, and the, the systems that do that. So robotics would also be in there. Civil and structural engineering, which also has architectural engineering, if you're interested in that area, chemical and biological engineering, for those of you guys that are interested in energy sources um, or also in food engineering, this is where you'd want to study. Computer science has the prestigious artificial intelligence um, discipline, which is becoming more and more uh, pertinent and important in, in our everyday lives. And uh, electronic and electrical engineering, which we don't offer computer engineering, but we offer pretty much everything else. And then mechanical engineering, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and material sciences. Our engineering um, faculty is one of the biggest in the UK. We have over 6,700 students and we get a huge uh, research grant from both the government and from private industry, which amounts to over 150 million um, pounds annually. For you as a student, what that means is you're going to get access to some of the best facilities in the UK and also some of the best researchers are going to be teaching on your course. Um, this is the diamond, this is where your, your money goes, and this is where you'll be doing the majority of your study. So this is a um, undergraduate engineering facility with five floors and 19 different laboratories, all focused to giving you hands-on experience as part of your engineering degree. And uh, just in the last minute, I don't know if I've been five minutes or four, but uh, just to mention uh, the generous range of scholarships that the university offers to international students. So first and foremost, we have 75 scholarships, which are called merit scholarships, which are considered 50% of your tuition fees. So you'll get a half price uh, UK degree. But in addition to that, if you're an NCUK student, you can also apply to six more opportunities, which will give you that 50% discount. If you're a student who's achieving above the entry requirements, the uh, Faculty of Engineering will give you a bursary when you join us. Um, it's usually around a thousand pound per extra uh, per extra 
grade that you get on your on your offer um, and confirmation scholarships as well for those that uh, accept their offer by a certain date in the cycle. Um, but anyway, that's enough from me. If you have any more questions about the University of Sheffield, come and say hi in my breakout room. I don't know what number it is yet, but uh, somebody else will let you know. So thank you very much. Back to you, Andrew. Well, thank you very much, Adam. Very impressive uh, use of your five minutes there. I fully appreciate there's lots and lots of wonderful things to share about Sheffield. And the University of Sheffield has long been welcoming students from NCUK pathways over the years. So um, thank you very much, Adam. And yeah, I really would encourage anybody interested in finding out more about Sheffield to visit Adam in the University of Sheffield's uh, breakout room booth. Thank you very much, Adam. OK, on with the show. Um, as I say, we are keen to run through these presentations uh, as timely as possible, really, to allow maximum time for you to meet our university colleagues. So. Um, I'll now hand over to my colleague, Yulia, from Aston University. Um, Yulia, if you're able to come on camera and share your screen, if necessary, please. Yeah. Um, uh, you can hello, see you. Hello. I hope you can see me. Most importantly, I hope that you can um, see my presentation. Can you see the slides? Yeah. Yes, yes. Great, fantastic. Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, my name is Julia and I'm a regional manager for the MENA um, for Aston University. My role here is to help you on your application journey to Aston. And here are my contact details. Um, and later on, feel free to drop into my breakout room as well. Um, Aston is an old established public university located right in the city center of Birmingham, uh, which is the second largest city in the UK and also the youngest one in Europe. We are very diverse and we welcome students from over 120 countries. Students love our location as Birmingham itself is very central. It's in the heart of the country and very well connected um, to the main cities like London, Manchester, Liverpool and others. Um, we're also only 10 minutes away from Birmingham International Airport, which connects us to the world uh, with major airlines flying to Birmingham directly, including Qatar Airways. Um, those of you who haven't been to the UK or don't know much about Birmingham, a little fact to keep in mind. Um, so Cadbury headquarters are located here. So those of you who love chocolate will recognize this brand. Um, also, um, Birmingham is home to Aston Villa Football Club, which is a partner of Aston University. And Birmingham will be hosting Commonwealth Games in 2022. Um, and also, although we are not on the coast, uh, we do have our share of water, uh, we have more canals than Venice. Um, as a university, we're a campus university, a very safe, friendly environment for your academic and social life, and all the opportunities the big city offers on your doorstep. Um, you can see on the pictures our new Students' Union building, which opened in April 2019, and it has already won the most inspiring building award uh, by the Guardians in 2020, and hosts uh, more than 70 student societies, which you are welcome to become part of. Um, Aspen reputation is quite multifaceted. We are consistently highly ranked in a variety of league tables. Um, some of the highlights are that we have been awarded the University of the Year by the Guardian and the Outstanding University, Entrepreneurial University by the Times Higher Education. Um, this year, we also have been shortlisted for the University of the Year by the High, um, Higher Education. Um, we have strong positions, not just nationally, but globally. Um, for example, business school is in the top 100, um, but also um, among 1% of business schools in the world with triple accreditation. Um, you can also see other subject areas, including engineering, cybersecurity. Um, and another impressive thing about Aspen is that we are very employability oriented. We are sometimes referred to as fast career track university. And um, in fact, we have, have been ranked second in the UK for the salaries of our graduates five years after the graduation. So again, just uh, to reiterate that a lot of our degrees have got additional external accreditations, um, especially in our engineering school, such as BCS, IT, et cetera. And that is an additional quality approval of our degrees and the recognition in the professional um, area. 
Um, unmentioned employability is a big factor for Aston. We were the first university um, who started offering a placement year uh, where you can go and study abroad um, in a university partner, or you can actually work uh, one year for a company uh, as part of your degree. So we have a lot of experience in this area and it also improves um, the employability of our students immensely. Those who are not allowed to take this one year of work experience have got an opportunity to be part of a business clinic where you can actually work with real companies um, solving their problems and helping them improve their businesses in the area. Um, and also just to mention that we do have a lot of state-of-the-art facilities. Um, our teaching is very hands-on and very practical um, and it will be impossible without the uh, equipment that we have. So some examples would be a lot of engineering labs, um, Bloomberg terminals, 3D printing, printing labs, and virtual realities at space, computer station, to name just a few. That's it from me. I hope to see you in the breakout room. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, uh, any presentation which manages to name drop Cadbury in there is always going to be a winner for me. So nicely done there, Yulia. Um, and yes, again, Aston University has been a very, very popular university among our NCUK graduates this past academic year, and it is a wonderful option for students. So yeah, please do uh, go and visit that particular booth if you want to find out more. Um, so on with the show again, uh, we're trying to roll, roll through this as timely as possible. Um, slight change to the, the plan. Um, can we now ask Jerry from the University of Manchester to step up, please? Uh, yeah, of course. Just um, allow me a moment. To Thank you. That's it. Okay. See you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you uh, very much. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for your time today and welcome to my brief introduction to the University of Manchester and our engineering provision. A couple of basic facts. We are located in the northwest of England in one of the world's favourite student cities. As you can see from this aerial shot, we are very close to the city centre. So that gives you access to all of the amenities, the opportunities and the facilities in both uh, locations there for you. So what is the University of Manchester famous for? Well, rather a lot, actually. But today, let's just focus on those areas relating to engineering, uh, technology and science. We are the birthplace of chemical engineering and with petroleum and the oil and gas sector being so vitally important to Qatar's economy. You're welcome. Um, back in 2004, we isolated the world's two dimensional wonder material, graphene. We are all gathered here today over our desktops, our laptops, our smartphone. And so there's a debt there too to the university as we are the birthplace of modern computing. And indeed, we're also the birthplace of the nuclear age, um, as per Rutherford, which is the building I would normally work in. We have 25 Nobel Prize winners to date so far, including 11 for physics, nine for chemistry, three for economics and two for the medicine or physiology category. Bringing you right up to date with rankings, we are once again 27th in the world and sixth in the UK uh, as per the QS World University rankings. Those nice people at the QS also provide uh, rankings by broad subject areas. Um, they actually classify them. Uh, so for the broad area of engineering and technology, they classify us as fourth in the UK and 43rd in the world. But I've um, broken that down so you can look at some specific subject areas. And the general message here is that we are uh, an academic culture of excellence. It's an enriched learning environment with a strong national and international reputation. And I've indicated some of our colleagues at uh, other universities um, that are closely ranked uh, to us for the same subject areas. So you might want to have a look at those and compare and contrast accordingly. Now we do actually ha have hundreds of degree programs spanning the humanities, social sciences, medicinal, engineering, and pure science subjects. In this field, though, I just want to highlight the areas of engineering, so aeronautical, civil, chemical, electrical and electronic, which includes mechatronics and mechanical engineering. Of course, as engineers, you will probably like the way that you use maths in the real world. So I've also highlighted our computer science provision and some of the pure science subjects as detailed below. In terms of entry criteria, I'm 
quite challenging for some students. So you can see in front of you the typical range of uh, offers. It varies by um, course. For us, the personal statement is an important part of the application process. Your degree can range between three and five years, depending upon whether you choose the BNG route or the MNG route and whether or not you choose to take the industrial experience year or not. Our programs are recognized, uh, not just within the UK, but under the Washington and Dublin Accords. And of course, we have the relevant professional accreditations for the engineering program that you are interested in, such as IMEC, for example. So why consider coming to Manchester beyond just the, uh, the past reputation? Well, we, we are continuously investing in genuinely world-class facilities, including this, the Manchester Engineering Campus Development, which has just opened £420 million, it's huge, it's the size of 11 football pitches, and as you can see, it brings together the largest concentration of interdisciplinary engineering in any UK university. The resources don't stop there, though. We also have the UK's National Institute for Advanced Materials Research, the world's largest single-use graphene rooms, the UK's most advanced nuclear research capability in UK academia, the Rolls-Royce Technology Centre, and so on. There's a wealth of resource there available for you. Aside from your academic experience, it's good to have an enriched personal and social experience. We have more clubs and societies than any university in the UK, including the academic societies, and I've listed some here that may be of interest to you. Of course, after all of that hard uh, work and play, you need somewhere to rest your head. So we do guarantee you accommodation in university halls of residence for every single year of study with us with different types of rooms to suit different budgets. Of course, you'll be investing a lot of time, energy and money, so you'll be thinking about the return on your investment beyond your intellectual development. And so it's nice to know that we are consistently very highly ranked, whether in UK or international terms for graduate employability. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my whirlwind introduction to Manchester. I look forward to seeing you in the breakout rooms. My contact details are here and I hope you enjoy engaging with the other universities today too. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, and yeah, fantastic option for students. Um, some uh, real sort of industry leading uh, research work going on there, as Jerry's pointed out. So uh, a good opportunity for you if you are looking to go into engineering to literally be being um, taught and working with academics who are leading on those types of initiatives. So uh, yeah, please do visit Jerry and the University of Manchester if you are interested. Um, so on with the show. Um, I'm now going to welcome Jayanti from uh, Leeds Beckett University, who will be able to give you a quick introduction to that particular university. So over to you, please. Thank you, Andy. Uh, good evening to everybody today. My name is Jayanti and I'm from Leeds Beckett University's International Recruitment uh, Office. So basically, I'm responsible for uh, Middle East and North African markets. Uh, I'll try to give you a short um, uh, overview on the university. Uh, just give me a minute. Let me share my slide. So, uh, so yes, so we are uh, basically based in the city of um, Leeds. Just a minute. So, oh yes, hope uh, my screen is visible. Yes, we can so, see. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we are based in the city of Leeds, which is um, in the north of England, two and a half hours uh, from London by train. Leeds is considered to be one of the most popular city with uh, students in the UK, and uh, it is an important business hub next to London. Uh, the city is well connected uh, to the rest of Europe. Um, Leeds Beckett uh, started as a technical college in 1824, so we have come a long way. Uh, we have now more than 28,000 students and we recruit from more than 144 countries. So, you know, we are very uh, multicultural, diverse, and as a city, you know, it's very warm and welcoming. So that is one of the reasons that it's, it's very popular with international students. We have 88.7% um, graduate employability rate. So uh, we are very vocational in our approach, very employability focus. So you will see most of our courses will have you know, practical skills uh, embedded within the, within the course. So wherein students can uh, 
opt for a placement here, or you know, we offer sandwich programs wherein student within the course can work uh, with a company in UK while they're studying. So uh, you know, it, it it basically helps students to uh, gain practical hands-on skills while they are studying. So we have 12 schools uh, and we offer a more than 300 programs across undergraduate and postgraduate courses. So these are some of the accreditations that you can see uh, that we uh, our courses have. So you know we, our courses mostly are professionally accredited, which adds value to the program. Um, so um, now talking about uh, our engineering program, um, we offer a broad range of uh, engineering uh, courses to prepare you uh, for you know, variety of roles across the, in uh, in the engineering industry, from civil engineering to electrical uh, and electronic engineering to robotics, uh, whether you know, your passion lies in experimental design or environment or exploring in uh, producing technology and systems. So, you know, uh, uh, our courses are basically rooted in practice-based industry uh, oriented and co collaborative uh, teaching. Uh, courses offer optional placement here uh, in the industry sandwich program that I have already discussed and professionally uh, we have the required accreditation, strong network and partnerships with the industry. So uh, these are the courses that we offer uh, from our uh, built engineering and computing school. So we have civil engineering. Um, we have integrated bachelors with master's engineering programs, which are instead of typical three years will be four years. So we have an MEng civil engineering. Uh, we have a BNG uh, building services engineering, electronic electrical engineering, robotics, automation. Um, we also have an engineering management top up. So this is for basically students who have an engineering background but haven't completed their degree. Uh, we also have an integrated uh, engineering program in robotics and automation. So as you can see, uh, most of our courses are like uh, recognized and approved by Engineering Council, uh, the Institution of Civil Engineering. So these are accredited. So uh, typically our uh, tuition fee for uh, undergraduate programs uh, is between 14 and 15,000 pounds per year. Postgraduate programs are between 15 and 16,000 uh, pounds. Uh, Self-funded students are eligible for scholarships. So this is my contact details. Um, I'll keep it short and I hope to meet you in the breakout room. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Again, um, thanks for sticking to the time. And again, I can just vouch uh, from my experience of working um, it, within Leeds in a, in a wider context, it really is a fantastic student city. And well, there's many, many, many students who become quite uh, accustomed to being a Leeds custodian, I guess. So uh, yeah, yes. interested in finding out more about Leeds Beckett University, please do visit Jayanti in the booth. Um, so we're going to go for a slightly different flavour now by uh, engaging with a colleague uh, who is representative of one of our Australian partner universities. So um, Dylan, if I can introduce you from Swinburne um, and you can tell us all about that wonderful university. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Um, hi, everyone. Hello from Malaysia. That's, uh, that's actually where I am. Uh, yes, I am from an Australian university, Swinburne. And uh, if you just... Let me share my screen, I'll explain. Right, just a moment. Okay, I hope everyone can see that. Yes, so, we yeah, can welcome. see that. Thanks, Andy. All right, so uh, I'm from Swinburne University of Technology, Sarawak campus. So you might recognize Swinburne as an Australian name. So we are, we are an Australian university and the word, uh, the new word there might be Sarawak. That's actually a state on the island of Borneo in Malaysia. That's where our campus is. So allow me to explain. Um, Swinburne is actually an Australian university, uh, originally from Melbourne, um, uh, established in the year 1908. So we've been around for over 100 years. I'm from the Sarawak campus in Malaysia. We've been around for just over 20 years. So we're a full 
um, branch campus of Swinburne University, Australia. Um, so Swinburne as a young university, we've uh, managed to get into the top 50 of uh, universities under 50 years old. Uh, we've also been able to achieve some, uh, some good rankings in, uh, in the fields of business, in civil engineering, and art and design, and overall uh, in the top 1.5% of uh, QS uh, rankings uh, in 2021. Um, Swinburne, as a university of technology, our focus is a lot on uh, industry engagement, and we find that more than 93% of our graduates do find employment within six months of graduation. And I'm also happy to report that in business and engineering, we find that up to 100% of our graduates do get employed and they do um, gain employment in the top 100 global brands uh, of which you can see here. So with an Australian degree, it's uh, recognized worldwide and uh, you know you can work basically anywhere in the world. So just again to highlight where we are, um, um, some of you may know Malaysia, but I think more, most of you may, may have heard of Borneo, the island. So we are actually on the southern tip of Borneo. This, the name of the city is Kuching, and we actually share um, Borneo Island with uh, Brunei and parts of Indonesia. So it's uh, yes, very exotic, very tropical, uh, but we are a city campus. Um, here you'll see, okay, that's the name of the city again, Kuching. Uh, that's the city center. And we are, the campus is, if you look at the, the picture there, it's on the top right hand uh, corner. So it's about 10 minutes from the city center. Uh, here's the Google Maps view of, of, of the campus. So it's very close to um, 24 hour eateries, uh, a three star hotel, uh, shopping mall. So, you know, our, our students enjoy um, the, the accessibility to like basically everything they, uh, they would need as a student. There's even like a 24 hour private hospital within five minutes walk, just in case. All right, so why Swinburne in Sarawak in Malaysia? So first of all, we are an Australian campus. So we offer uh, fully Australian degrees in Malaysia. Uh, secondly, doing it in Malaysia, uh, you have the advantage of uh, paying Malaysian fees, which is about a third of the Australian fee. So um, the Malaysian ringgit is very similar to the Qatari Rial. So I would say for an engineering program, a four-year engineering degree, you would be paying about, about 38,000 Rial per year for, for the same uh, Australian degree. So just an example. Um, we do offer very flexible uh, mobility options between the Malaysian and Australian campuses. So uh, our undergraduate students could always opt for an exchange semester or even fully transfer their, uh, their studies to the main campus in Melbourne to finish up. And lastly, I mean, to remember, uh, we have very strong graduate outcomes as, we, as we've seen in the previous slide, uh, up to 100% of our engineering graduates do get employment within six months. Uh, here, I'd like, just like to highlight that uh, it's very affordable also to, to, to be a student in Malaysia. Um, uh, across the board here, you'll find, you know, in, uh, from accommodation to your meals, entertainment, transportation, it's very affordable. Uh, I think compared to Doha, I would say a city like Kuching, you know, it's, it's uh, um, the cost of living, living will be quite significantly lower uh, if you see from the examples here. But I'll be happy to discuss this in detail uh, in the breakout room. Right, we currently have about 4,000 students from over 60 countries, so not a very big campus, and about 18% or about 800 uh, international students. We do have uh, students from Qatar and in uh, the Middle East region, and also exchange students from, from, from Melbourne, and also a study abroad students from, from Europe and from other parts of Asia as well, among the 60 countries. So uh, besides engineering, which we are here to talk about today, we also offer uh, study areas in arts, business, computing, design, and science. Uh, the next slide here, you, you get to see basically everything that's offered in the Malaysia campus, the Sarawak campus. Uh, so those of us interested in engineering and science would be interested in the, the second column, that those are uh, all the engineering uh, programs that we offer. So these are full Australian degree programs uh, accredited by um, Engineers Australia, the Washington Accord, so basically recognized worldwide. Uh, so very quickly, uh, we do recognize, of course, the NCUK IFY, and it's uh, very similar to our A-level uh, requirements. So we'll just need um, eight points out of your three best subjects. So two Cs and a D gets you into the, the undergraduate degree program. So if you're coming for engineering, we'd like to see that you've done math and uh, preferably physics or any, any other, any two sciences. 
right i think i will stop sharing here but i've got you know plenty to uh, uh plenty more to show please feel free to to uh to, to uh, talk with me in the breakout room and uh, i'll be happy to answer your questions thanks so much Hi. Thank you very much, Dylan. Uh, and yeah, a very different offer there um, for potential NCUK students there. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in studying with Swinburne at their Malaysia campus, so I'm sure you are keen to go to Australia as well, uh, then Dylan will be able to give you lots more information there. Um, so sticking with the Aussie theme, uh, I'm now going to welcome my colleague Alexandra from UNSW in Sydney, who will be able to give you a, a quick idea of what it's like to study in Sydney with UNSW. So Alexandra, over to you. And again, appreciate the time zone and that you must be having lots of coffee right now. Thank you. Thanks very much, Andy. And uh, yeah, thank you. It's uh, nice to be back. Um, uh, hi, I'm Alexandra Waitman. Um, I hope you can all see my screen. I am going to talk to you very briefly, um, just a little bit more about Australia. I know um, you might be very familiar with um, some of the other uh, universities, but um, I used to work in the UK. I now live in Australia, so I'm, I'm here to tell you all about what it's like over in Australia, in particular, um, the engineering industry in Australia and the opportunities that lie there. Well, right, so uh, like I said, I'm from the University of New South Wales. Um, UNSW is a world ranked university. I've got that it's um, 44th in the QS world rankings, but we're actually 36th in the world for engineering. Um, uh, number one for employability in Australia. We have a number one engineering school. Um, it's actually the largest school as well. So um, we have more specializations than um, any other Australian uh, engineering school. So whichever kind of discipline you're looking into in engineering, I'm sure we'll have something to, to accommodate. Um, and I guess, you know, what I wanted to focus on today really is, is the difference in Australia and, and um, why I love living here. Um, you know, it's a happy lifestyle. We've got great weather, the post-study work opportunities, you can stay afterwards after your degree for, for two years. The salary levels are phenomenal. You know, I get paid double for the same job I was doing in the UK. Um, and of course, it's not a bad place to live. I mean, the skyline of Sydney there, you can see just what a beautiful city that, that I live in and um, where the university is based. Um, so I wanted just to focus and give you almost 10, 10 reasons why um, Australia is, is the best place really for, for engineering. Um, we have world-class universities, you know, I've talked about um, UNSW rankings, the broad se selection of engineering programs. I think we have something like 165 different disciplines in our um, engineering school from aerospace, chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. Um, but we really are at the forefront of, of technological research as well. Um, so we, you know, we're, we're doing huge things with qu quantum computing. Um, we developed the membrane that means we can drink clean drinking water. Um, UNSW is actually completely solar powered, 100% solar powered. And that was two of our students um, who actually invented solar panels and, and went on to um, kind of have their own solar power companies and we buy all our solar power from them. So it's it's really, a, a you know, and I've got there the student led initiatives where, you know, the research that we're making is really making a, a huge impact in the world and, and to people's lives. The exposure that you'll get in Australia is phenomenal. You know, we've got amazing um, relationships with employers and internships and work experience and also your network that you make and the, the other students that you're kind of surrounded by whilst you're during you know during your studies um that kind of leads us into the diversity you know we've got 60,000 students from i think 120 different countries I spoke about our employability. We are the number one um, university for, for employers and they do come looking for our students. We've got amazing relationships within, within industry and, and um, in that regard. Um, the strong alumni network, our students are so proud when they graduate, you know, they come back and they help. We've got amazing peer, peer mentoring programs. Um, and so they come in, they help the first years. And these are like, you know, industry leaders and, and CEOs of global companies that come back and they help our alum, our um, new students um, and have like a one-to-one -one with them week every week. 
Um, and so the student experience, it just really is, it, it's phenomenal. Um, not only are you kind of learning from world experts and, uh, you know, kind of at the forefront of, of leading research and, um, uh, you know, world Guinness, Guinness Book of Records, um, so Solar Swift car is the fastest solar car in the world. Um, and that's actually a project that our students worked on. Um, and and it, it has been um, the, the fastest car, I think, for the past four years, it's, it's won that competition. So, um, so yeah, you really are surrounded by expertise and, and the experience you'll have not only in a, you know, a beautiful country and an amazing um, surroundings on the campus, but um, certainly engineering in Australia is is one of the backbones of, of the entire, um, I guess, the economy and the, the, the industry that's out there. The job um, market is growing. There's, there's lots of opportunities, whether it's internships, work experience, a project um, given to you within your course, or whether it's when you've completed your studies and you go on into, into um, your, your career. Um, so like I said, I'm Alexandra, I'll be in the breakout room, loads and loads of engineering programs, um, lots of different uh, pathways and routes in, and we've got some scholarships available that um, will, will be announced shortly. Um, so yeah, come and have a chat with me and uh, I'll tell you a lot more about UNSW and Australia and what it's like to be here. Thanks very much, Alexandra. So um, one of the takeout messages I've got there is if you like the sunshine and fast cars, then uh, UNSW might be <laughs> for you. Um, so thank you very much for that. So um, we're now crossing back over um, to the West now, and I'm going to invite my colleague from the University of Bristol, Sarah, um, to say a few words of introduction to the University of Bristol. So Sarah, over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. So yeah, my name is Sarah, and today I'm going to give you a really quick introduction to uh, what studying engineering at the university might be like. So. For those of you that haven't heard of Bristol before, we are based in the southwest of England. We're marked with the purple dot on the map there. We definitely can't promise you Sydney weather, but by UK standards, we are in the south, so you can uh, look forward to slightly sunnier weather. Um, and we are about an hour and a half outside of London, so not too far from the capital. So Bristol's a small city, we're the eighth largest city in the UK, but by international standards, that's very, very small. But what we have is very much the energy of a bustling urban metropolis. So we have that big city London feel, but with a friendly atmosphere that's really going to help you to feel at home. And what we're really lucky with at the University of Bristol is that our campus is based right in the heart of the city and centre. So it's really easy for our students to enjoy everything the city has to offer. Now, Bristol is a compact city, but it's also very green. We do have over 400 parks within the city boundaries. But what I think is important to note is that Bristol really is a city that's committed to protecting the environment. We are a former European green capital. Uh, we are the UK's first cycling city, and we do have a very ambitious aim to become carbon neutral by 2030. And sustainability is really a theme, a theme that you'll see running through all of our courses at the University of Bristol, but particularly for you joining us today, engineering courses at Bristol do have a real focus on sustainable development and resilient design. Bristol is also a city that has a long history of engineering, which I think is really encapsulated by one of our most famous landmarks, and that is the Clifton Suspension Bridge, uh, which is just a short walk away from the university campus as well. It's a 150 year old bridge, and it was designed by world renowned engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel, who is considered to be one of the most ingenious and prolific figures in engineering history. And if you can believe it, this was actually apparently the longest bridge in the world when it was first constructed. And Bristol's engineering heritage is world famous. So the Bristol Robotics Lab, for example, is the largest robotics lab in the UK. And Bristol's aerospace history dates back to 1910 with the foundation of the Bristol Aeroplane Company. And um, even today, we are a hub of aircraft manufacturers with big companies that you'll recognise like Airbus and Rolls-Royce based within the city. And the Faculty of Engineering, which is what you're interested in, plays a big part in the city's continuing uh, technological revolution. 
So onto the university itself, we are incredibly proud to be ranked top 10 in the UK by QS, as well as 62nd in the world. We're also really pleased to see our engineering courses consistently ranking amongst the top in the UK. So you see civil engineering uh, there, which was first uh, for 2022 in the Garden University League table. And our engineering courses at Bristol are quite broad and we've got a couple of different specialities for you, starting with aerospace, which, as I've mentioned, is an area of particular speciality in the city of Bristol. We've got a couple of more general courses, so civil and mechanical engineering, as well as our newer courses, which are engineering maths and engineering design which allow you to explore a range of different engineering disciplines, which is really great for any of you that have a broad range of interest, or for those of you that know you're interested in engineering, but you're not exactly sure where you want to specialise just yet. And these courses are particularly exciting because they were designed in collaboration with our industry partners, specifically to fill the skill gaps in graduate engineers. So, these courses do have particularly good employment prospects because of that. We then also electrical and electronic engineering, as well as computer science, which is quickly becoming the university's most popular course, which I'm sure all universities in the UK are seeing as well. So lots of options available for you there. And I think what's important to note about our engineering courses is just how practical they really are. So our courses are very much about developing your skills to make sure that you are industry ready. And we've got a range of lab space that supports us with this. Much of it relates to that world class research that takes place at the university. But undergraduate students do have access to those spaces, mostly for project work. For example, our civil engineering students use the earthquake shaking table in a project where they're asked to design a structure that can withstand the strongest earthquake possible. But that facility is mostly used by our earthquake and geotechnical engineering group, which um, is a team of world class academics who are studying ways to improve resilience uh, of infrastructure to extreme events and make infrastructure generally more adaptable in response to changing circumstances. In terms of the grades you need to be achieving to get an offer from Bristol, we do, uh, of course, accept NCUK students and we are typically looking for grades between uh, AAA and A star AA. Uh, so they are quite high and they do need to include mathematics. That's something that we're very keen on, particularly for our engineering courses, so that um, your subjects do need to include mathematics and then one other maths or science subject. We can accept the English from NCUK students as well, uh, as long as you receive a B overall and at least C in each component, but there are other options available for you as well. But that's all that I was going to cover with you. I know that was very quick and a lot of information in hopefully less than five minutes, but do pop over to my breakout room if you want to learn any more about the University of Bristol. Thanks very much, Sarah. And yes, you were very close to that five minute um, deadline. So well done for cramming in so much of the wonderful things that Bristol has to offer into such a short space of time. OK, um, so we're now going to go a little bit north of Bristol in the UK context and hand over to my colleague David from the University of Huddersfield. David, welcome. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all here today. Um, thank you for waiting around for uh, my presentation. Just bear with me a second while I share my screen. I'll be two seconds. Okay, I hope everybody can see and hear me. Is that, is that good from your side, Andy? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay, perfect. Okay, so hello everybody. My name is David. I am the International Officer for um, the, the MENA region at the University of Huddersfield and I'm really proud to be here today to just provide the quick introduction to our university and also our computer and engineering school as well. As you can see from the picture here, we are a beautiful campus um, where I'll explain more in terms of location in a minute, uh, but we are a stunning lo uh, located sort of campus which is centralized in the town center of Huddersfield. Uh, we actually are quite unique as well because we have a canal which runs directly through our campus as well. So uh, quite a beautiful place. However, so where are we? So we are based in the north. We're not too far from some of the universities who are here today. We are sandwiched between Leeds and Manchester. We are 
central to the UK and north of England. We're about 20 minutes from Leeds and about half an hour or so from Manchester. So we are a town, not a city. So it's surrounded by beautiful countryside and has a great sense of community. Um, it's safe, vibrant and multicultural. And because we are a town, there's a great sense of low cost of living. So there's a nice balance between your course fees and the low cost of living. So just as a general overview of the University of Huddersfield, we have a great sense of internationalization at the university. Uh, we have very good ranking in terms of our ability to provide support to international students. Um, we've been, we were founded in 1825. We've been here for a long, long time. Um, and we have over 24,000 students with over 120 nationalities. Three and a half thousand of them are international students and that grows year on year as well. Um, and we have been second in the UK for international student support and that's something which is quite key and I'll draw upon later as well. And uh, year on year we fluctuate around the 97.3% graduate employment rate, which is really, really high for uh, our university in terms of those students going on to find work after they finish their courses. So to, there's plenty of things I could talk about here today, but I'm going to keep it kind of uh, kind of short as possible because of time today. But uh, we're going to focus just on computer and engineering today at the university. This is one of the six schools at the university. And basically this school, they aim to provide an inspirational learning experience, which is underpin underpinned by pioneering research. Students will benefit from a practical emphasis of their teaching in a modern industrial standard facilities. And they will aim to provide foundations for exciting and successful future careers. So basically that means the facilities and the sort of curriculum delivered is preparing, priming students ready for when they go to the real world to start their career jobs. The Computer Engineering School has many sort of departments and subject areas, but as a focus today, it's mainly on the engineering one. So we do have computing, such as artificial intelligence, uh, computer systems, etc., and gaming and web design. But we do deliver a lot of electronic, mechanical, etc., kind of engineering courses. We have engineering design, automotive, motorsport, computer system engineering, energy engineering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have such a broad range, and we're quite well known for our broad range of engineering courses at the university. So do please come and chat to me later on some of these courses if you'd like to. We, for all our undergraduate courses, we have postgraduate as well, but the main focus here today is undergraduate. For self-funded undergraduate students as well, you receive a £2,000 scholarship for each year of study. So if you're studying three-year course, that's £6,000 in total straight away for a self-funded international student, which is really quite good. Uh, one thing we do champion and we are well known for is our placements. Um, so these are your sort of internship strip sort of placement year where after your second year of study, you take a year out to go and work in industry uh, and below are some of the kind of companies we are associated with, both nationally and internationally, where students have gone to do their one year industry industry placements. You then come back and do your final year at the university. It's a very rewarding experience and uh, it certainly helps those students going on to find career places later on once they have graduated. There's lots of facilities uh, on offer at the University of Huddersfield for the engineering courses and um, they're well primed and ready to go for some modern as well. So they are ready to go into industry companies later on. Um, it's well facilitated throughout the school um, where it is automotive engineering. You're dealing with lots of engineering mechanical structures and support systems. Uh, if you're doing train analysis, we have our own train system here as well. So people can design uh, systems ready in place for when they do go into the world for trains. There's also as well the enhancement of student experience in the engineering school as well. It's not just your the course you study and the, the placement options you have. It's also the challenges they deliver as well for students. So, for example, we've got three examples here where, for example, you've got the Hawk uh, team where they compete each year in building a drone uh, and they compete in worldwide uh, competitions with the drone designs and delivery. We have our IMECI formula, uh, formula student competition where they design their own formula car and race it in competitions as well. And also we have our um, en student engineers competing in the railway challenge as well. So it's a very much engaging and fun, rewarding experience at Huddersfield. Um, 
just brought upon before at the start of the presentation, just one thing I do want to finish on is, is quite key is that we have been highly ranked for our student experience for international students. Uh, and that's because we provide incredible support for students both in school and beyond, whether it is personal tutors, academic skills support, um, learning development seminars, just general support across the board is really, really key because um, we do appreciate people coming from around the world into the university. It's a whole new cultural experience of different systems of uh, teaching and styles of learning. So it's really key that students are provided with as much support as possible, both in and out of the course and beyond when they leave the university. So this is something we are very strong at championing. And that's it, keeping it short and sweet. I've got plenty to talk about more later on if you want to come to the uh, drop-in sessions in the breakout room. So do come in. I've got my contact details here as well, but I look forward to chatting to you later. Thank you, Andy and the team. Thank you very much, David. And yes, uh, Huddersfield remains a popular university among uh, students from across the region. So uh, yeah, there's, there's probably lots of like-minded students who've uh, taken the plunge and gone to Huddersfield for their degree. So yeah, please do check in with David at the University of Huddersfield. Um, so next up, uh, we're going slightly, uh, if my geography is correct, I think slightly more north of Huddersfield by going across to Jill, uh, who was joining us for our medical session yesterday from uh, the University of Central Lancashire or UCLan as they're better known. So Jill, over to you, please. Thank you very much. Just doing the sharing thing. So I think I'm assuming it's working fine. So yeah, as Andy said, my name's Jill. I'm the regional manager for the Middle East and North Africa here at the University of Central Lancashire. Um, so we are generally referred to as UCLan, and that's how we tend to be known across the region. Uh, we are one of the largest universities in the UK, and we've got a long history that dates way back to 1828. Um, we're actually one of the UK's largest universities, and we've got a staff and student community of about 38,000. Um, our community is made up of students from all over the world, over 100 different countries um, is where they all come from. Uh, we have quite an employment focus on our portfolio of courses and in general we've got around 350 different bachelor programs and about 200 different master's programs um, and within all of those we give you all of the skills and the experience that you need in order to be successful in industry and because of that we find that a significant number of our students graduate from us with either a first or a two one and those are actually the highest scores that you can get for a British degree and so with all of those outstanding results our graduates leave us ready for employment and in fact most of our students are either in employment or further study within six months of graduating. Um, so UCLan, where we're located, yes, it's the northwest of England. We're in a city called Preston. So it's a small city, but it's got absolutely everything that you need. Um, so whether it's shopping malls or museums that you want, we've got a local football team that you can support, lots and lots of different cafes, restaurants, bars, and so on. Uh, we're actually the home to the UK's first KFC as well. So quite notable for that. Um, we've been awarded the purple flag status. So that marks us out as being one of the safest and the most diverse places in the UK. Now, in terms of where we are to other places that you might be more familiar with in the UK, we're kind of right there across the middle. Uh, we've got fantastic transport links, so you can really explore while you're here with us. We're about two and a half hours away from London and from Edinburgh, and then the local airport will be Manchester International, um, and you can get there within about 50 minutes on a direct train. Um, what is really nice about the city as well is that it really does offer you the best of both worlds in the city and the country living so yes you've got all of the shops and and that kind of buzz life but then we've got a river that runs right through the heart of the city and that brings with it those kind of more calming relaxed spaces so you can see one of the pictures there very very green lots of lovely parks and in the summer in the spring times there's all sorts of activities that go on within those park areas so it really does give you that kind of relaxing space away from the hubbub of university life so if we take a look into engineering at UCLan, um, actually Lancashire, which is kind of like the state, so that's the, the region that we're based in, it is home to the largest number of STEM graduates in the UK. Um, and here at UCLan, we offer a range of engineering programmes that have got a real distinct emphasis on the practical learning. So you're going to develop those core skills uh, within business in key areas like problem solving, decision making, teamwork, communications. Um, the degrees that we offer 
Bangalore, which I'll show you shortly, are all accredited. So uh, most of the routes will allow you that opportunity to put theory into practice. Um, and you'll also have opportunities to take paid placements or short, uh, short internships as well. So again, it's looking at giving you the skills and the theory that's going to make you successful once you've graduated and left us. Um, so we find that a lot of our students leave us with those core skills, um, like the ability to design, to manufacture service complex, complex systems. Um, we've got alumni who are working across the sector in all sorts of different companies. As you've heard from most of us, we have people who go off into things like Formula One, Ministry of Defence, BAE, which is just down the road from us as well, um, Airbus and all sorts of other companies like that. Um, recently, we've had a campus master plan, so we've invested a lot of money into all sorts of different facilities across the institution. One part of that master plan was the creation of our engineering innovation centre. So just to give you a, a bit of a screenshot of what some of those facilities look like, it's a £35 million investment into the EIC. Um, so it's kind of an integrated space that's fully equipped and um, you're going to have the opportunity to interact with industry because they're uh, invited to use our facilities if they want to as well so there's lots of collaboration going on with our students and industry where you can work on those real life projects again thinking about once you've uh, progressed from the university you will have those core experiences um, and things to put on your cv that make you a desirable candidate so as I mentioned before, we've got a lot of programmes on offer at the university and on the screen at the minute are the uh, engineering ones that we offer. So we've got all the popular fields in engineering, construction and architecture as well, um, all of which offer uh, fantastic industry links. Most of them offer professional placement. They're all accredited. Uh, accredited. Um, so yeah, lots of opportunities. Most of them are the three-year B-Eng, but we do also offer the four-year M-Eng options as well as the one-year master's programmes as well. So I'll be happy to talk to you within the breakout rooms to discuss further information about the courses that we offer, the fees that we have, the entry requirements, the amazing scholarships, and anything else you'd like to know. Thank you very much, Jill. Um, and yes, uh... Yeah, UCLan is, is increasingly getting many, many applications from NCUK students from across the region. Again, uh, if you are interested in finding out anything about engineering or, or if there are any of you who uh, are interested in going into medical sciences as well, um, Jill is uh, certainly the best person to talk to from UCLan on that. Just a quick reminder that we do have breakout rooms uh, that are open and available now or when obviously the uh, the presentations do conclude we've got two more to go and um, so please do go to the bottom of your screen you'll see breakout rooms as a button click on that and you should be able to navigate around accordingly um, but for now we are looking now to move across to one of our other very popular NCUK university partners which is with Elaine Brown at the University of Bradford so Elaine uh, the floor is yours Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. Um, so yes, I'm from the University of Bradford, and I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to the university in the city, but with a real focus on engineering, of course. So I am actually one of the academic staff who delivers on the programmes in the um, in the School of Engineering or the Faculty of Engineering and Informatics at Bradford. So maybe a little bit different from some of the other presenters so far today. Um, because we know that you're interested in engineering and engineering type courses, um, we wanted to make sure that we could answer your specific questions about engineering. Um, but of course, I can also answer lots of other general questions about the University of Bradford and the city as well. So if you do choose to come to Bradford, you will without a doubt be taught by me. Um, I am a chartered mechanical engineer, but I teach the students across lots of the different engineering disciplines. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. So. It's useful, I think, for you to see where we are. Lots of the other presenters have been showing their locations. So Bradford is a city in the north of England as well, like many of the other um, universities that you've seen today. Our closest airports are Leeds Bradford International Airport and Manchester Airport. Um, and we are, just to give you a bit of context, we're about three hours from London, but very close to Leeds, Manchester, Huddersfield, Uckland, some of the other universities you've heard from already today. 
And the city of Bradford, it's a really diverse city. Um, there are lots of people from lots of different cultures and lots of different countries living in the city. It's a very young city, lots of young people and um, with the UNESCO city of film. So it's very cultured and beautiful theater, lots of places to go to enjoy yourself. Um, there is a video if you want to have a look at the links afterwards There's a YouTube video slash University of Bradford and that will give you a bit of an idea of what a fantastic city we are to live in. So our students, we are actually a relatively small university compared with some of the others you've heard from today. Um, we have just under 10,000 students on campus and we purposely think about our size because we want to offer a particular experience for our students. And this is really important for students in engineering. For example, we have a real focus on hands-on learning and the development of the practical skills that employers really want. And so we have our size particularly set so that we can really provide the best student experience for that. Having said that, we are a hugely diverse campus. So we've got lots of different nationalities studying on our campus. So in the University of Bradford, we have four faculties and the Faculty of Engineering and Informatics is the one that's of most interest today. Um, I've listed the main um, undergraduate engineering programs here that we would cover that you might be interested in, but there are others that I can also answer questions on as well. So like I said, I am actually a mechanical engineer. I, however, do sit within the Department of Chemical Engineering, University of Bradford, which might give you a little bit of an idea about how interdisciplinary we are. Um, interdisciplinarity is huge within engineering employers. They really want graduates that can, that can speak to people who have different backgrounds um, and diverse teams are really important to engineering employers. So one of the reasons that we set ourselves up as we do is in order to, to provide that experience for our students straight away. Um, we focus on the fundamental engineering programs because that's what employers tell us that they want. So we have mechanical engineering, civil and structural engineering. We have new programs in architectural engineering starting this year. Uh, chemical engineering, biomedical engineering and clinical technology, and then also software engineering and applied artificial intelligence to the more computing side. Um, we have fantastic facilities for our students. So I mentioned a moment ago that there's a big emphasis on, on the practical skills and the teamwork that's involved in engineering. So we've got um, lots of multidisciplinary and specialized teaching laboratories. Our courses offer, so for some of the courses, there are BSc routes, but for the majority of engineering courses, there are either BEng or MEng routes. And of course, we offer MSCs post BEng if you want to go that route. And I can talk to you about the pros and cons of that afterwards if you wish. And all our courses are accredited by the professional bodies, which really helps with employability. And um, just really importantly, if you're interested in engineering, you need to know why we teach as we do teach. So our engineering ethos on engineering learning ethos at Bradford um, is all based on something called CDIO, which is an international way of engineering education. It stands for conceive, design, implement, operate. And it really focuses on the problem solving skills that engineers need. And our employers who take on our graduates absolutely love this in our graduates. And um, we have a real emphasis on the skills. So analytical skills, problem solving, team building, technical communication, these things. We have an interdisciplinary stage one for many of our engineering programs, and that gives you an experience of speaking to other engineering students and broadens your, your exp experience and expertise. We have a real emphasis on lots of small group work. We also implement research-led teaching, which means that you can link with our research specialisms, which I'll say more about in a moment. And we do have industrial placements. So we have year-long industrial placements and a fantastic career service who can help you to find the placements and support you with that. Um, we have various different scholarships rather than go into details now. I can talk about this um, in the breakout room afterwards if people wish, um, but I can give particular information and links on that. And here you can see one of our students in our heavy structures civil engineering lab. Um, our campus, the campus tour, if you look at the YouTube link, the University of Bradford, that will show you what a great campus we have. It is um, relatively close. It's about five minutes walk from the city centre, so very close to all the facilities, but also really close to the countryside, so a lovely place to live and to work. Um, our accommodation, we've got really beautiful accommodation right on campus, so lots of our students live within two or three minutes walk of, of their lectures. Our campus is fully open this year, we've got a really busy campus, lots of students um, on, 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 the, um, on site this year and enjoying their lectures and their practical classes. 
Um, just a quick message about the research. Um, research is really important to, at Bradford in terms of making sure that it's integrated fully with our undergraduate programmes. We do not keep our research separate from our teaching. Everything is, is linked and joined. So all of the people who teach you are research active and we have research themes that really bring out the, the specialisms of engineering. So advanced healthcare, innovative engineering and sustainable societies are our, are our themes across the university, but the engineering students and staff really feed into all of those. So it's a very short time that I've had to talk to you this evening. So I've just put my contact details up here and also a more general contact, um, contact email address if you have more general inquiries afterwards. But I would be very happy to answer specific inquiries about our engineering courses um, and show you some, um, some broader tours during the, the breakout rooms. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Elaine, and a great opportunity for students looking to go into engineering for sure to literally be speaking to one of the academics who will be teaching on a potential engineering degree once you go off to university. So thank you very much for that, Elaine. And um, last but very much not least, um, I would like to now switch our attentions over to uh, Richard, a colleague from uh, one of our university partners down in New Zealand. Again, this is a viable route for students who have completed the International Foundation Year with UFC. So um, Richard, over to you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, so um, to introduce myself quickly, my name's Richard. I work for the University of Waikato in New Zealand. Um, I actually visited UFC uh, last month, so some of you may recognize me if you attended my uh, workshop um, at UFC. Um, but today I wanted to give you a quick introduction to Waikato itself and obviously talk about some of the STEM programs that we offer and maybe tell you a bit about why you might choose uh, New Zealand uh, as a, a study destination. Obviously, uh, quite a few differences between uh, the UK um, and uh, uh, the, the other side of the world in New Zealand. See if I can get this to work. Here we go. Um, okay, so um, just very quickly, um, just because New Zealand is quite a different study destination um, uh, compared to the UK, and uh, I think people are more familiar probably with uh, the the UK and the geography and so on. Um, you can see a map of New Zealand on this slide. Um, it's about. Um, let's see, about 24 hours um, from the UK, probably about 17 or 18 hours um, from Doha, um, flying into Auckland. Um, I believe it's the one of the longest flights in the world um, from, from Doha to Auckland. Um, but uh, yeah, the time passes quite quickly and it's uh, I've done it a couple of times, it's not too bad. Um, Auckland's the biggest city in New Zealand. There are eight universities across the country um, and the University of Waikato is one of those eight. We have two campuses, one is located in Hamilton and a secondary campus in Tauranga, which you can see uh, just on the map on the right hand side. So um, just before I talk about our programs, um, then uh, just a quick introduction uh, to why you might choose New Zealand uh, as your study destination. So firstly, quality. Um, all New Zealand universities are ranked within the top 500 in the world in the latest QS rankings. Um, so it really is a quality study destination. Um, secondly, safety. Obviously, people are concerned about safety in today's world, and New Zealand is the second most peaceful country in the world, again, according to the latest uh, Global Peace Index this time. Um, so crime rates are very low. Um, you'll feel very safe and secure as an international student in New Zealand. Thirdly, work opportunities. Um, so if you complete a bachelor's degree in New Zealand, um, you'll meet the academic eligibility requirements for a three-year post-study work visa. That means you can stay in New Zealand for three years and you can work in any job. Um, and then potentially, if you're looking to stay longer term, there may be residency opportunities. And then uh, finally, lifestyle. So um, New Zealand is well known for its natural beauty, its uh, relaxed, laid back outlook to life, a very friendly place as well. If you've seen Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, then you'll know um, how, what a beautiful place New Zealand is. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've uh, followed any Kiwi comedy or uh, that type of thing, you'll know that people are very friendly and laid back. It's a, it's a great place to live. Um, 
just very briefly here, um, the, these are three programs that um, have the best job opportunities um, of any degree, really, in New Zealand. Um, you've got engineering professionals. If you study engineering, you can see the job prospects indicator there is very high. Same with computing, software developers, um, and then also um, science. So there's, a, a, again, really strong job prospects in all of those areas. So if you are planning to stay in New Zealand after graduation um, and you're looking at studying a STEM subject, science, engineering, those types of areas, computing as well. There are really good opportunities in New Zealand after graduation. I've just picked out a few programs here um, that um, may be of interest to, uh, to people um, looking uh, to study in New Zealand in a computing or engineering science uh, capacity. So um, you've got our Bachelor of Computer Science. This is a three-year degree. It's accredited by the sole accord, which means it's recognized for um, its very practical um, nature and um, really good um, links with industry. Um, you can also work towards um, chartered information technology professional status um, after graduation um, using the degree. Um, there's a work integrated learning paper and a work placement opportunity. So we can put you in an internship in your third year of study. And you can see the three streams, um, general data analytics and embedded systems. Then you have the Bachelor of Engineering. This is a four year degree. Um, this one has 800 hours of work experience throughout the program. So you will place you in different work settings um, to get that work experience. And it's normally paid as well. So uh, it's, it's a really fantastic degree when it comes to that practical experience. Um, accredited by Engineering New Zealand, recognized by the Washington Accord, means you can work almost anywhere in the world after graduation. And you can see we offer eight different streams of engineering here. You can choose between any of those eight. And then we have the Bachelor of Science, um, a huge range of different areas that you can study in. Um, again, you have the option of a work um, uh, placement in the third year. Um, you also have the option of 10 weeks work experience if you study the Bachelor of Science Technology. Um, and most subjects include lab work, field trips, and so on. Um, we do have NCUK specific scholarships. Um, so all of our NCUK um, IFY uh, students coming to Waikato will receive a $6,000 um, scholarship. Um, and we also have the International Excellence Scholarship for students with high grades. And that's up to uh, 20,000 New Zealand dollars, depending on how strong your grades are. The general requirements, though, um, for Waikato, we'd be looking at Bs and C grades for engineering and uh, computing and science programs um, and C in English as well. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for bearing with me the last presentation of the day. And I really look forward to speaking to you about New Zealand um, in the breakout rooms, which I think are about to, uh, we're about to join now. Thank you, Richard. Thanks to everyone. I, I believe this was the last presentation we had today. I encourage everyone to go to the breakout rooms. You can find the breakout rooms uh, next to the record button, or you can click more in case you cannot see it um, in the lower side of the screen. Please join the breakout rooms and have your own individual chats with universities. Uh, breakout rooms are up until 7.30. If you need any help, I'll be available in the University Foundation College breakout room. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.